wrong with that? Could you check the magazine? Ah, let's have a look at it. Hmm. Well, maybe the release is stuck. I'll replace it. Won't take a minute. Just hold on. Okay, fellas. The tip paid off. I got him. Come on in. Roger. Hey, Doug, your buddy Forrest doesn't answer from Tampa. You want me to keep on trying? I'll try him later. By the way, is this your first flight? Yes, it is. A helicopter is like a woman. Beautiful woman. It's very delicate. Delicate. You like music? Well, imagine you're dancing a waltz. Helicopters are for me. You sure? Why not? So easy. Come on. This is Doug Bennett. I'm calling from New York. May I speak to Steve Forrest, please? Oh, he's still far. Okay, I'll call him back. Hey, what's going on? Yes, Ford. Let him go. You bastard, you're working here. Hey, that's the only picture I have of my friend Steve. Hey! Hey! Just get ready. I'm sorry about that, Steve. Tampa Flying School, can I help you? Hi, this is Bennett again. Has he landed? Forest answering service. I am out right now. So please leave me your name, number, and message after the beep. Very funny, Steve. Yeah, my favorite voice. Listen, Joe Garrett got out of jail yesterday. Why are you calling me? It's the only case we never solved in our whole career. It's your career, Blue Eyes. I resigned two years ago. They're not getting me back until they give me permission again to use my fists on bad guys. I got no time for Boy Scouts. Um, listen. About Garrett. After he left jail, he got in touch with someone in Miami. He's on his way down there this very minute. Yeah? I got news for you. Ten of my students are having tests in the air next week. And you're trying to tell me about an old robbery? Robbery? The robbery. Twenty million bucks, Steve. Even if it was 200 million, my student's test still come. Come on, Steve. Garrett's on flight Eastern 181. He'll land in 45 minutes. That'll give you enough time to get there and trail him. I told him... Well, you saw it? Wrong. Over and out.
of the passengers is missing. He must have slipped. All right, you think that, Lion. His bags are there. He ate. Great thinking, Lion. Go through the bags and see if you can come up with a name. Done that already. This is, uh, uh well, Easton San Quentin. The guy's name is Garrett. He got out of the pen two days ago. Garrett, that name mean anything to you? Afraid not, Captain. Didn't think it would, Lion. Joe Garrett was convicted of robbing the Detroit First National Bank of $20 million. He was arrested immediately by two real cops, friends of mine. He served nine years, and he never snitched on his accomplices. wonder what brings him to Miami in such a hurry. Sooner or later, everybody comes to Miami. The sun's always shining. Right, Lion. The sun's always shining. Hey, he shines. Together. <laughs> hey, what you do now? Me and We trip the light, man. Hey, you got a light? Hey, you got. Boy, I hardly touch it. Hey! I even leave that alone, huh? Oh, I'm sorry to sit alone straight. I didn't mean to hurt Hey, Phil, looks like you found some company. Hey, friend, cut the sunshine. I'm a night bird. <laughs> yeah, I'm a night bird. Dad. Dad? I'm innocent. I want to talk to my attorney. <gasps> oh. Hey, Richie, get two ambulances, one for the hospital, one for the morgue. Commissioner Reisner just won't get off my case. Uh -huh. we, the minute we heard Garrett was in town, we tried to pick him up, but we missed him. Result, Garrett's dead. Uh, I heard. You know, we at the Bureau are taking an interest in the case. Why don't you let me handle this thing? I can't let Reisner force me into retirement. And you know things haven't been going so well at the station with me lately, and Garrett, Reisner likes to remind me of that. Whitey, as far as I'm concerned, you're welcome to work on the case, as long as you don't get in the way of my boys. I want the Bureau to work on it, but with the agents of my choice. Well, who'd you have in mind? Doug Bennett and Steve Forrest. I don't know the names. They're with your New York office. Last agents. Long time ago, when I was up north, they were on the police force with me. To be exact, they were the ones that caught Garrett. What do you want me to do? Lend me Bennett and Forrest. They can pass the city cops. Undercover. Can do. I'll, uh, I'll call the New York office today. Naturally, you asked for help from your old buddy Forrest, but because he's still upset, he turned you down. You got it, sir. In the meantime, they killed Garrett. Right. Which leads us to believe that his accomplice in $20 million is somewhere in the Miami area. Your assignment is to fly to Tampa. Convince Forrest to work with you. You'll be taking orders, by the way, from your old acquaintance, Captain Tanny of the Hialeah Police. All right, sir. By the way, how are you going to convince him? I'll twist his arm a little. One more step and I'll break your legs. Hi, Steve. Long time no see. Just keep it that way. What a way to greet your buddy. Save your breath, you're wasting your time. Look, Steve, I came to ask to come on back. Are you deaf? You're wasting your time. Go home. Steve. You're gonna change your mind. No way, Blue Eyes. Not even if I tell you they killed our old chief, Captain Tanny. When? Who? Could have been the same guys who bumped off Garrett.
to seven years in prison. Guard comes down here to get the 20 million. Instead, he gets killed. Life's strange, isn't it? Steve. was a time when you called me Carol. Come in, come in. Thank you. I, I heard what happened and I... Yes, very kind of you. Thank you. Sit down. Uh -oh. Thank you. I'm going He's... to miss him so much. He was so sweet. His loss is a real tragedy. Intelligent, sensitive. Yes, real loving companion. That is so true. I wrote it on his tombstone. He was always so happy. Happy? <laughs> well... He jumped and licked and gnawed, pawed all over the place. Jumped? And, and he was so polite. Polite? Yeah, he, oh, he so never good. messed on the carpet. He'd wait at the back door so he could be let out and do it in the garden. <laughs> you got a outhouse. Well. Oh, Steve, he'll be so happy to see you. See me? He's coming home early tonight. Well, uh, well listen, Carol, I, uh, I know that when these things happen, it comes as a terrible. Shocked, but I'm a bit... Uh... That will be him. Excuse me. Yeah. Hello? Yes, honey. Not those young hoods again. Oh, it was Doug. Tell him hi from me. Oh, honey, you'll never guess who's here. No, it'll be a surprise. You're going to be late. Well, never mind, honey. Bye. He said he'll be... Steve? Isn't that strange? Vanel, did you take anything from you? No, thanks. Well, you want to file charges?
Hi, Steve. What took you so long? I was waiting for you. Me too. Steve, yes. Yes, what? I'm Steve. Oh. Hi, Chief. How you doing? Right. You know, this bastard told me you were dead. Huggy, you didn't have to go that far to help me out. What are you talking about? Police commissioner's giving me a real hard time. If I don't solve the Garrett case, he's going to make me retire. And after all these years in the force, I wouldn't know what to do. What can I do for you? I don't have the guts to ask. But I really need your help. He does. Will you shut up? I decide for myself. Well, if I have a student's test postponed for a while. Okay, I'll help you, Chief. And we're having a lot of robberies in the north end of the city. We've got a bolo out for two white males operating a 1984 dark blue Ford. No other info on that. Now I want you to meet a couple of new cops. Stand up, fellas. This is Jess Donnell and L.A. Ray. Look a little grown up to be rookies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, funny boy, what are you laughing at? It's not his fault. He was born that way. Right? Born that way. Yeah, that's right. All right, guys, let's hit the streets. You two guys wait. Nobody here is supposed to know who you are. Just go out on patrol and handle anything that goes down in your sector. But remember, your main object is the Garrett case. Here's the keys with the address where you'll be staying. It's small but comfortable. What's with this collection you've got going here, Chief? Jerry Clay was a good cop. He was killed about three weeks ago. He was close, very close to getting his hands on the expressway robbers. But he had this thing for working solo. Put in 20 bucks. Yeah, what's going? That's yours. I just put it in. Put in another 20. Really? From me. Why don't you put it in yourself? Forgot my wallet. I'll pay you back later. Ah, uh, come on. Won't you ever change? Always generous with my money. Mm. He comes in, he sleeps, etc., etc. Yes, the etc., etc. interests us. Consider he was killed. What do you know about him? You must know something. Not me. Listen here. He wasn't killed in this hotel. We know that. Did he make any calls? Bunch of them. Are they registered? No way. He used the public phone over there, right? Yeah, that's right. How did you know that? Hold on a minute, Alan. Who did he talk to? Listen, rule number one in this business is you never, never listen to get phone calls. Get phone calls. Come on, right. get the key. Show us the room. Yes, yeah, right away.
This is room five. What happened in here afterwards? Afterwards when? After they found him dead. Anything you didn't connect with Gary? Well, there was one thing. I don't think we'd find that very interesting. Why don't you try it? After the cops left, some guy checks in this room. Were all the other rooms full? That's the point. There was room three, room seven. This guy insists on room five. I mean, he insisted. What else did he do? He checks into the room, locks himself in, and don't come out till the next day. He paid and split. Weird, isn't What's it? What's so weird about it? He didn't even sleep. He left that room cleaner when he left than when he first came in. No kidding. Describe the guy. B-I-G. Big. I mean a brute. Indian. Did he sign and register? Of course, silly. Sitting Bull. At the time, I thought the name was very familiar. Do you happen to know him? Very funny. Yeah. You remember anything unusual about him? Muscle upon muscle upon muscle. Okay, we understand you like muscles. What else? Has to be an ex-fighter. I know, I could spot one. All these guys look like heavyweights to me. Yeah, but our guy's a carpenter. <laughs> carpenter? What makes you think he's a carpenter? Well, he took the whole room apart and then put it back together. He's a real pro. What the hell was he looking for? Maybe he's a cockroach collector. Carpenter around here who used to be a wrestler? together, that's my job. What were you looking for? 20 million bucks would be a good bet. All the money in the world. Ain't worth a damn compared to a friend. Very touchy. Go on. All I found was a screwdriver and a hammer. Maybe they didn't belong to Gary. Maybe. Okay, what's the story between you and him? We shared a cell in San Quentin. He 
saved my life once. To pay him back, he stabbed him. No. I read the news in the paper. I decided to do a little investigating on my own. I felt I owed him. But did you see him before he got killed? Yeah. He needed money. Some bumps ripped him off on the bus. Figures. What else? He said that one of the guys who pulled the robbery with him had to be here in Miami. Garrett wanted his share. He knew how to get it because he had the goods on the guy who has it. Yeah, unfortunately, the guy found him first. And shut him up for good. Then took the goods with him, right? No, Garrett was too smart. He went to the appointment empty-handed. He hid whatever he had on the guy. So well. Even I couldn't find it. Suppose he told you the guy's name. No. Okay, Charo. Thanks. If you if you think of anything else, give us a call at this number. If you find Garrett's killer, let me know. I have a few things I'd like to say to him. Okay, Charo. You do the rest. Charo finds Garrett's killer before we do. There won't be much left for the autopsy. So get this. Check for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Which of course you can't keep, since cops can't accept rewards. Nuts. I really wanted to get a Porsche. There goes the down payment of the new chopper. We've got a better idea. 
Now, that'll take care of Clay Kids College. Guys, uh, we all thank you from the 8th Precinct. Okay, okay. Well, since we can't have it. Okay, you can go, guys. Yes. Yes, Chief. You're off today. But tonight, put on your best threads and go over to Club Violin. You meet a CI there who's got something on Garrett for you. I know you recognize him. You recognize you. You just be there. See you later. Hmm. It's gonna be tough on you. Why? Putting on your best threads and looking human. Mm. Speak for yourself, E.T. Gentlemen, what do you have? Uh, I'll have a pina colada. Lots of peanuts, no rum. Uh, blonde Mary for me. We ain't got no blonde Mary. How about a red kitty, a brunette Barbara, a black Diane, or a yellow Ming toy? Gorgeous thing, just in from Hong Kong. How long have you been in this business? Just fix it with tomato juice, vodka, and pepper. Oh, you mean a bloody Mary. Come on, anti-violence. What's in the name? Gotcha. We're here with the informer. How come they're always late? Informers? Rappers will like it. Yeah. Would you mind passing me the peanuts, please? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, they're always late. They smell like a latrine. That's because they're scared. It's the adrenaline. Considering the kind of work they do, it's not surprising. To our meeting. As you can see, not all informers are late. And they don't all smell like a latrine. And as for rats, I won't even discuss it. My name's Irene. Hi, I'm Jay. I'm Ray. To avoid suspicion, I think one of you should ask me to dance. Yeah. <clears throat> you, Twinkle Toes. All right. Madam, would you care to dance? Love to. You know, I've been feeling we've met somewhere before. I don't think so. You look familiar. Were you in Boston two years ago? No. Funny. How come a, an attractive woman like you ends up in a job so... Branchy? Yeah. No, I mean dangerous. Well, that's a long story. Maybe someday I'll tell you. Oh, hello. You need nuts with what you're drinking. Thank you. Mind if I sit down? Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. On this side. Well? Surprised to see me? No, nothing surprises me anymore these days. I was passing by and I saw you come in. Oh, glad you did. I mean, how's your truck? Looking pretty, between you and me. I made a little extra on the insurance. What do you mean, between you and me? It's just between you and you. I don't want to know. Screw on your insurance. Who's the good-looking gal? Oh, she pushes an 18-wheeler. We can't talk in front of her. I'll take care of it. Okay. Ah, <laughs> you pump iron. Uh, there you are. I want to introduce my friend, uh... Annabelle. Annabelle. Hello. Uh, Hi. Uh, by the way, me and Annabelle are going to take a, a moonlight ride. Hey, I didn't know you were such a romantic. Really? There's a lot of things you don't know about me. <laughs> nice meeting you, Irene. Hey, it's yours. Sure is. <laughs> Hey, you're going to tell me you use this easy to park with a compact all the time. Always. Get in. You'll find it's a whole lot more comfortable than a Rolls Royce. Am I going to be safe? Who knows? I'll risk it. Got some great <laughs> tapes. I hear you're interested in finding out about a certain corpse. 
Garrett. How did you know about it? It's supposed to be top secret. The ways of the Lord. Are infinite, I know. So, what have you got for me? Well, Garrett, while he was in Miami, met a man named Fletcher. Who's he? Florida's major wheeler dealer. What's his gig? Gambling, anything illegal. So, how do I get to him? I heard through the grapevine he intends turning the Orange Bowl game between Washington and Oklahoma into the biggest ripoff of the year. How? Rumor has it he intends kidnapping the Washington quarterback, Joe Ranieri, just for the day. Come on, that's hard to believe. Anyway, it won't cost you anything to keep Joe Ranieri under surveillance. I've been thinking... Yeah, I know. Boil the kidnapping, catch Fletcher, and give him the third degree. Right. Then let's go for it.
Stand by. We're almost there. So you got three minutes. Okay, slow down. Troops, fellas. We'll take you to the shower. Mr. Fletcher, yeah. we've gone way past the 10 million dollar mark. <laughs> appears to be telling the truth. There's nothing in the file to indicate that he had anything to do with Ralph Duran. But here's where the plot thickens. Ralph Duran, highly dangerous, suspected of various murders and robberies. On March the 5th, 1978, his body was found in a Detroit garbage dump, burned beyond recognition. There was no prints. The only identifiable thing was a scorched credit card. Credit card. Yes, me, I smell a rat. Yeah, a crook with credit cards? Right. Yeah, wait a minute. The robbery took place on March 1st, uh, 1978. We arrested Garrett two days later. Remember that? Sure, March 3rd. And then uh, Duran's body was found on March 5th. With his record, he could have been in with Garrett. 
Remember, the witnesses said that there was three robbers. Duran's dead. Garrett's dead. Number three is your man. Yeah, but why would Garrett be looking for his death? It doesn't make sense. It don't make sense for me either, so you handle it, Blue Eyes. I'd have been better off if I'd have stayed with my flying glasses. Demolition Derby? Mm-hmm. Remember? No way. No. Uh, the door. That's the time our dinner's ready. Uh, the Indianapolis 500? Haven't been there in ten years. It'll come back to you sooner or later. Hey, you're pretty good. You bet. I'm gonna get you. Yeah. You were the first man to at arm wrestling. Well, you're tougher in my house. You can't imagine how important that is to me. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Squeeze me. Squeeze me tight. What? Squeeze me tight. Like so? No, tighter. <laughs> tighter. No, I can break you too. No, you won't. I love it. Yes? Dean, a guy named Charo called looking for you. He wants you to call him back at this number, 473-8329. I checked it out. It's a public phone booth in the Mikosuke district. 473-8329. Yeah, you got it. Yes, how do you too, pale face? Something's just come up. Maybe it's important. Maybe it's not. I'll be waiting for you. Here's to you. What you mean, the informer or the cook? All of you. Thank you. Why don't you tell me all the places you've been in the last two years? Well, I spent a year in Philly. Philadelphia. That's it, Philadelphia. <sighs> I've never been to Philadelphia. <laughs> uh. Don't answer it. It might be important. I know who it is. Answer it. Hello? Yes, right away. It's for you. It's that pain in the... Check. That's you. The other day, shortly after you left, I received this. It's from Garrett. Ego assures your future. What does that mean? I thought about it for three days. One thing's for sure. The letter, the screwdriver, and the hammer are all connected. 
The ego assures your future. I don't get it. When we do get it, we'll have the key to the mystery. <laughs> yep. Well, you saw Garrett alive. You don't think maybe... No way. Here, take them. They're the clues. And another thing. Garrett said the guy I was looking for had a facelift. <laughs> Come on, the guy he was looking for died seven years ago. There's an old Indian saying, not all the dead are buried underground. Sure. Some get buried at sea. Some got burned up. Burned? Burned up? Yeah, burned. Hey, wait a minute. Who is it? It's me. Hi. I'm glad you could come back. Yeah. Sorry, but I need the names of all the plastic surgeons who work in Florida from 77 to 78. Now? Yes. But it's midnight. I can't wake up my contacts. Please. All right. Hey, Detroit. A Formula One race in Detroit, right? Never been there. Hello? It's got to be Danister. He worked on a lot of criminals. And he died on March 30th, 1978. Right. That's 25 days after Ralph Duran died. And that's enough time for scars to heal, right? What's with this saying right all the time? Are you sure? So it figures then that Ralph Duran had the operation on his face and then killed the surgeon. Right. There you go with that word again. You know something? I get the feeling this is a job for grave diggers, not for cops. Keep coming up with corpses. Right. It's an animal clinic. Maybe he practices craft in delinquent Dobermans. Could be. Personally, all Dobermans look alike to me. All bite, no bark. Danister? What do you cops want? You want to check my license? No, we just want to ask you a few questions about your husband. My husband's been dead for seven years. We know that, ma'am. We're interested in the circumstances of his death. There's a coroner's report. He was hit by a truck. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a dog who's getting an IV and I've no assistance. Goodbye. Hey, you want a hand? Yeah, we're trained paramedics. Okay, Bobby, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I'll take that out of there right now. If you want to help me, you can go out in the garden and feed the dogs and the goats. The dog's food's in the yellow pail, the goat's food's in the green pail. Oh, sure. I'll feed the dogs, you feed the goats. No, you feed the goats. I'll feed the goats, right. There. Now you're going to feel much better. These are all stray animals abandoned on the street. Of course, someone who doesn't love animals is capable of anything. Like your husband's killer. What do you know? Well, to tell you the truth, we don't really know anything. But we think that the truck that hit your husband didn't deliver it. We want to reopen the case. Seriously? Why do you think we're here? But who couldn't have been? Well, theoretically, all of your husband's patients could have uh, had an interest in getting rid of the witness. That's true. You were the last client to hear the surgery on. Uh, how could I forget? Come with me. He paid so well, we took a long vacation in Europe. London, Paris, Madrid. Almost a month? Yes. And when you got back to Miami, the accident happened? Exactly. Two days later. Did your husband keep files on his patients? No, but, but I have all of Mel's appointment books. Here, this is the one. 1978. Thanks. You know, these operations were illegal. No names, no receipts. We yeah, are March. Hey, look at this. R.D. That's Ralph Duran. Ma'am, what's this uh, 
F.T. after the 75,000. It was a code my husband used when the operation called for a total physiognomy. Here you are, ma'am. Thanks for letting us feed the animals. Bye. You think you can catch the killer? Our record's pretty good, ma'am. I bet you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe Tom is actually Durant. Give him a tip, huh? Yeah. Thanks a lot, mister. Have a nice day. Are you guys out of your minds? Delman is probably the most important man in this city. He's a political heavyweight. He heads a cons consolidated realtree, and he's a big shot over at the country club. Yeah, well, what about his initials, R.D.? When the hell of a coincidence? Come on, Steve. Millions of people have those same initials. Where does this money come from? What's the story? It's simple. He was expatriated out of Cuba like a lot of other people to get away from Castro. When? Oh, about seven years ago. But he's loaded. He made a lot of money in the stock market. Could you get us the exact date he got here? April 2nd, 1978. <laughs> a month after Ralph Duran's body was found. Coincidence number two. Number one, the initials. Number two, the date of arrival in Miami. Just three days after that plastic surgeon died. And that's coincidence number three. Oh, come on, you guys. Okay, forget it. I'm gonna hope in hell again. Yeah. Well, all we need are some of Delman's fingerprints to compare with the rat. Good thinking. It's the only way to prove our theory, once and for all. Hey, didn't Tanny say Delman's chairman of the golf club? Yeah. His locker's gotta be loaded with his fingerprints. That's right. Sure, they didn't take anything else. I don't like it. This time, those two got too close for comfort. Understand? Hey, sir. Orange juice. Make it two.
here we are, cruising around in the patrol car. We're wasting our time. Let's do something. Kick off my plane with a juice. Look, uh, I forgot my wallet again. Will you take care of this and I'll pay you back? He forgot his wallet. Yeah. You're lucky it's me and not a mugger. Come on, tightwad, let's go. attempted murder here. Mr. Delman's our man. That's right up his alley. But he's writing us a letter. Let's forget about the initials for now. Not the way he just turned up in the city. And now a bomb. Put in our car the day after we tried to lift his fingerprints. But how does Delman know you want his fingerprints? Well, some guy almost killed me to get his comb back. Listen, Chief. We need a search warrant. You give us that. We'll give you Duran and a platter. No, no, guys. That's too big. If you blow it, we're dead. What if we come up with proof that'll nail him? Such as? Check the computer and see if anybody at the golf club reported an attempted robbery last night. No, it's a negative report. Don't you think that's funny? Well done. God help us all. I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I'm not giving you a search warrant. You can work it as a couple of private citizens, but I don't want to know anything about it. There's been too many corpses already, so remember, no more blood. Frank, may I have your attention, please? In addition to my past contributions to the city of Miami, I am proud to announce that this will be Miami's biggest ever construction project. And I could never have done it without your help. Thank you.
How dare you interrupt my party? You'll pay for this. Sure. Bill, my partner. Hmm? Who? Who are you, anyway? Can we have a little talk? Come into the house. Excuse me, please. Take a seat, please. The only excuse I can find for you, gentlemen, is that you're from a loony farm. What do you want? We want to tell you the piece of old history. Just to see how good your memory is. Eight years ago, three bandits held up the Detroit Federal Bank for $20 million. And? We caught one of them. Only one of them. Garrett. But he wouldn't rat on anyone. Very interesting. Continue. Then Garrett got out of jail and came here to Miami to find his friend, Ralph Duran, and his share for the robbery. Garrett found Duran. But Duran had a new face and a new name and the same old killer instinct. Never can guess what happened next. They found Garrett's body with six inches of cold steel in it. And we're convinced that Ralph Duran lives in this mansion and is sitting in front of us. Right, Mr. Duran? <laughs> Fantastic. It's a bad joke. He should be fiction writers. You're yeah, wasting his cops. I'm gonna ruin you. Oh, yeah? Look at me. I'm trembling all over, sir. I'll give you a chance to ruin us. How? We want to take your fingerprints and see if they match your hands. If we're wrong, you can bury us. Okay with me. I've got nothing against taking my prints, but first I'd like to make a call. Robert Delman speaking. Get me Mr. Reisner. He's the police commissioner. My dear Robert, what can I do for you? Joe, two of your men are in my house with some cockamamie story about me not being myself for some hood named Duran. A bank robber. A killer. What? There's more. I believe these two officers are the crooks who broke into my locker at the golf club the other night. I didn't report it then, so I'll do it now. Have my utmost apologies. They insist on fingerprinting me. Don't ask me why. Naturally, I'm more than willing to cooperate, but I shall make a formal complaint to the city, suing for damages. I'm telling you all this because you're an old friend. Unfortunately, these jokers are going to cost you some headaches, what with the elections coming up. Yes, of course. Put those two on the line. Go ahead. They can hear you. Identify yourselves. Officer J. Donnell. I own your department. Officer L.A. Ray, ditto. Get back to your precinct and consider yourselves under arrest. Tell Tenny I'll be in his office in half an hour. This country can boast of having the greatest constitution in the world. And you harass the city's most influential and illustrious citizen. I'm amazed at you, Tenny. I don't need to tell you I expect your resignation. You too? Hand in your uniforms and badges. I've already notified your superiors. They'll be taking the necessary action against you. That's all. Sorry, Chief. Hey, it's my fault, too. We tried. Just didn't work out. Thanks. People like Delman to make the early garbage and stuff. I'm off the force, and I'm going back to my helicopters. Hello, Mr. Clay. Can I help you? We were just passing by, so I said to the children, let's go in and thank those two angels. Oh, Danelle and Ray. Hmm. Right now, they need all the gratitude they can get. Oh, why is that? You see, they had a problem last week. Here's the lot. If it makes any difference, the men are on your side. Oh, excuse me. I'm Mrs. Clay. Well, I, I heard about what happened. I'm really sorry. The children and I wanted to thank you for oh, what you okay. did. Yeah, sure. sure. Take care, kid. Good luck. Chin up, man. 
Now you know I quit the Bureau. To the politics. Well, at least we did something for the clay panel. Hey, taxi! Adios to Irene. Nah, I don't think so. What about Annabelle? Are you kidding? I'm not in the mood to arm wrestle. Let's just go get our bags and then head straight for the airport. Can't do right now. I'm gonna turn it in tomorrow. Oh, well, don't. Why? What's going on? Listen, by the time we finish, it'll be rising. Original of the tape you're about to hear is in my hands. Original that tape, come and get it. When and where I say. And with $10 million. Plus eight years' interest, makes me even 20 million. And if I don't show? You'll show. This is blackmail. Any tricks when I send the original to the FBI? 
with a note suggesting they match your fingerprints with those in Duran's old file. Twenty million is a lot of money. You have eight hours to put it together. We meet at ten o'clock tonight. The Yankee Company's portside warehouse. Naturally, you come along. Ramon, I want all the men in my office within a half hour.
of our shock and sight. <laughs> That would. the FBI building in New York. Uh-huh. Special Agent Irene Allen. I was sent to Miami to act as your cover. And I just couldn't miss the ending of your brilliant operation. Hi. This is really too good to be true. But I thought I told you no blood. <laughs> Come on. This is tomato sauce. Well, then. you got to go make a little visit now. Where? you got to score the sale. Your friend commission arrives back to your flying list. I still got my students. Well, good luck. Uh, I forgot my wallet. Would you pay the cab and, and give him a tip for me? Hey, remember Charo and his Indian saying, all the money in the world ain't worth a cramp. <laughs> 